Well, the other big story, the newly discovered intel leaks in the United States say Russia will be able to continue fighting its war against Ukraine for at least one more year. As per the so-called Pentagon Papers, Russia's ability to continue the war has not been crippled despite intensive Western sanctions. Officials say Moscow is relying on increased corporate taxes, its sovereign wealth fund, increased imports and business adaptability to counter sanctions. And even though the sanctions have hurt their business, Businesses, Russia's economic elite are unlikely to pull support from President Putin. U.S. officials say they are likely to persist in upholding the Kremlin's objectives in Ukraine. The papers also indicate Russia is boosting its defenses on the ground to counter a major Ukrainian attack. Satellite images show a vast network of Russian fortifications sweeping down from western Russia through eastern Ukraine and onto the Crimean uh, uh, peninsula, according to reports, the most heavily defended is the southern Zaporizhia region and the gateway to the Crimean Peninsula. This comes as tens of thousands of Ukrainian troops have been training in the west to use different military assets on the battlefield. Ukrainian officials say the counteroffensive will come when its forces are ready. But experts now say that new Russian defenses could make it harder for Ukraine's ability to carry out complex combined operations effectively they're trying to limit uh ukrainian movement so what the ukrainians will seek to do in in their offensive is to like pierce the russian line and then rapidly drive their uh, military vehicles uh to the coastline or into rear areas and so the length and the width of these defense defenses is structured to prevent that so you have a kind of the front you have the ditch which is to stop um uh, armored vehicles or to make it at least make it difficult for them to advance then you run into uh the dragon's teeth or devil's teeth which is another tool to make it harder for them to advance and well ukraine has pledged to take back all the territory occupied by russia and for more on this we're joined by james jackson journalist and political analyst from berlin uh, thank you so much, James, for joining us uh, this evening. Now, the Intel leak suggests that sanctions on Russia have not effectively stopped its ability to fight this war, and it could very well fight this for another year. What do you really think can help, uh, you know, make Russia stop its forward march here? So I think it's important to remember that this leaked document, um, which was released from Pentagon Papers, actually doesn't just talk about uh, Russia's ability to wage war. These documents are just about the effects of sanctions. So actually, it doesn't say very much about Russia's military capabilities. But of course, it is true and it is clearly the case that Russia's ability to financially fund its war has not been destroyed by unpres even unprecedented Western sanctions, which means on some cases we might need to go further if, if we want to stop Russia's ability because they are able to keep um, manufacturing and buying um, rockets, including drones from Iran, and they're looking at ammunition from North Korea. So Russia, of course, has managed to sanction proof its economy to a much larger degree than we thought in 2014, since 2014, when the first round of sanctions started after the annexation of Crimea and to other Eastern Ukrainian regions, uh, Donetsk and Luhansk. So I think the problem is we've also got R Russia increasingly using um, countries in its sphere of influence, such, such as Kazakhstan and allegedly also Turkey, to get around the sanctions. I think the West needs to crack down a little bit harder on that if we want them to really be effective and stop Russia's ability to wage war by taking away their funding. Right. That's an important point you make, James, that they have made themselves sanction-proof after the Crimean uh, war. And how much do you think that the Chinese president has a say in this given the fact that he has met with Zelensky, can he really broker peace for these warring sides, even as many in Europe believe that he truly has some leverage here as far as uh, you know, this war is concerned? That's a really good question. I actually do think that the Chinese president could do a lot more if he wanted peace. But I think the fact that he's continuing to meet with Putin, in fact, increasing close ties, shows that he doesn't want peace. And that's the fact that he only recently spoke with Zelensky, despite being in contact with close contact with Putin throughout the entirety of this last year, shows that he's not the right person to make a deal there. He's, to, he's not someone who the Ukrainians can trust, although it is a positive step, of 
course, that he's speaking to Zelensky and that diplomatic ties are improving there. Actually, I think Xi Jinping, President Xi Jinping um, could end the war if he wanted to, because Chi now Russia is almost a part of China's orbit. Russia has been so internationally and also financially weakened. Just because they can still make rockets doesn't mean their economy is in a good state. Let's remember that they are now being pushed further and further into China's orbit. And I think China is happy to be the big brother in this sort of relationship. Dragon bear, I'd say. <laughs> Right. Uh, so obviously all of this depends on whether China really wants this war to end or not. James Jackson, thanks very much indeed for joining us this evening with your perspective. Thanks for having me.